Hey y'all, I'm Dan Hamilton, host of the Next Gen Warrior Show. As always, the Next Gen Warrior Show is brought to you by Chairman George P. Bush and the Texas Veterans Land Board. Today, I have the great distinction of being joined by Chief Joel Baker, Chief of the Austin Fire Department. Sir, before we get into the myriad of lessons learned for decades of service and leadership, can you tell us a little bit about your military background? Absolutely, and thanks for the opportunity to talk about my military background, which I am so proud of. Uh, in 1982, when I graduated from high school, Northside High School, go Tigers, by the way. There you go. Uh, I graduated from high school June 6, 1982. June mm -hmm. 15, I believe that Friday, I was in uh, Paris Island. <laughs> camp. You know, picking sand fleas out the sand pit. So from 1982 to 85, I joined the United States Marine Corps, which was one of the best decisions I could have made. They got my mind right overnight, you know, known as MRU, Mind Right University. Oh. Yeah. So I was that, fortunate sir, enough, I Marine. Yeah. So I was fortunate enough to be assigned to 3rd Battalion, 1st Marine, it was Camp Hano at Camp, Camp Pendleton, the, the big uh, military base out there. And, uh, and when I went overseas to Okinawa, Japan, as soon as I came back, and I only had like maybe a year and a half remaining in my, on my contract, I transferred to 3rd Battalion, 5th Marine, was still on Camp Pendleton, so I can go back overseas to Camp, uh, to Okinawa, Japan, Camp Hassan, Okinawa. Uh, once I got out of the Marine Corps, because I was in the infantry unit, and once I got the Marine Corps, a couple of years later, I want to say around three or four years later, uh, I decided to join the United States Navy Reserve. Uh, I think around 1990, I joined the Reserve up until 2007. And around 2007, I went to the Iraq War. And I was 40 years old, hanging out with a bunch of 18, 19, 20-year-old Marines. I remember <laughs> uh, Charlie Company. I think they are from Cleveland, Ohio, or Cincinnati, Ohio. It's an MP unit. Mm -hmm. uh, our right together and i think my company officer was like 24 or 25 years old but he was sharp the marine corps did a wonderful job training him he was johnny on the spot sharp and i hear i'm saying man i'm 40 years old hanging out with all these young kids to many of his kids so uh after the war i came back to uh atlanta and you know reintegrated back into the civilian workforce so I'm a Marine uh, by heart and also a Navy reservist as well. I was a corpsman, so I stayed with the Marines as a corpsman. I was an 84 was a medic uh, in the corpsman, a corpsman with the uh, Navy Reserve. So I stayed with the Marine Corps unit. Well, yeah, Marines Marines love their corpsmen, so I'm sure the- uh, Marines love good corpsmen. Having you around. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I'm interested to know, I caught an interesting conversation that you had with a local station here, Fox 7. Uh, about your experience in high school prior to going in the military. And it's one that I can relate to as somebody who uh, a little bit disinterested, sometimes frustrated with my performance in school, didn't always love the academic atmosphere, had a difficulty or had difficulty testing. And that was something that you also experienced as well. And I'm interested to know what your message would be for parents at home for veterans who are parents at home they're listening to the program and they see their child struggling through academics but you have gone on to have such a distinguished career what about that time in high school were you able to either either compartmentalize it say hey this is i'm struggling here but this doesn't have to define me for the long run and kind of what kept you going well, it all began in elementary school. When I was in about the third grade, uh, my parents got divorced. And when my parents got divorced, I thought my world uh, come to an end for the most part. And so I started having, uh, you know, in today's society, some of my kids, I think they call it ADHD or ADD or something like that. Yeah, I, had, yeah. I had BADD. I was just bad. I had some behavioral issues uh, in elementary school. And, and because of my behavior issue, it interfered with my, with my uh, academics. So I had some challenges reading, I had some challenges in uh, math and other sciences, and other liberal arts and sciences in elementary school. But fortunately, I had teachers that care, I had some great teachers that care uh, about, uh, about Joel Baker about, at the time. 
And so by the time I got into high school, uh, I did not quite have those basic skills that I needed to really be successful as we uh, say success is in school. So I just did it just enough to get by in school. Did just enough to get by. But my behavior changed in high school. You know, I wasn't that trouble kid. I've grown up in life, got became a little bit more mature in life. But I still did not know what I wanted to do when I got out of school and what I was going to become. I knew I wasn't going to college. College was not on my radar. I would have flunked out not the first quarter, the first week. <laughs> my writing skill was in the pits. I just did not have the uh, academics to be successful in college. Uh, and I did just enough in school. And at the time I went to high school, if you didn't cause a lot of trouble, if you do just enough, come to school every day, get, yeah. you know, don't cause trouble in class, do, do some work. I mean, if you don't do all your work, you can pass with the C or D and graduate from high school. So I wasn't an A student. I wasn't a B student. I was probably a C plus, C minus, depending on what day of the month it was, uh, week it was. And, uh, <laughs> So, so I, what I was your, what, what, if I can ask you, what, what was your favorite subject when you look back and you were like, well, I did okay in that one? Uh, beside PE or gym, probably my favorite subject was history. Uh, okay. I have a great history teacher, uh, several great history teachers. I really love history. To this day, I love history. Uh, history is not always beautiful, but it's history and I, I love it. Uh, so probably history was my favorite subject uh, in school. Uh, so you were... And, you know, and, I decided once I got out of high school and once I left the Marine Corps uh, and got on the fire department, I started going to college. And that's what mentality changed then. Was it like you said, I think similar for myself as well. Was it just about growing up and maybe seeing the world a little bit and a change in priorities for you that made going back to school, made academics more um, attainable or something that you kind of aspired to? Uh, I was on the back of a fire truck uh, with the Atlanta Fire Rescue Department many, many moons ago. And uh, we was on a, a, a call. I remember it was almost like yesterday. We called it like yesterday almost. Uh, we was on a power line down call. It was, it was in the middle of, middle of, of an ice storm. Uh, we had open cab fire apparatuses. So I was exposed to the elements. I was on the back of the fire truck. My toes were frozen. My fingertips were frozen. My face was frozen. And I remember knocking on the window and asking the lieutenant and the driver, could I sit up front with them in the enclosed area because they had some heat. And the lieutenant at the time said, well, rookie, if you want to sit up here with us, get promoted. And I got mad. Man. <laughs> and so I said, you know what? I'm going to get promoted. So um, I decided at that point that I'm going to school to work on a degree. Now, the, the strange or funny thing about this I did not have a strong uh, academic background or foundation. So when I went to, uh, at the time, the Cab Community College, I took about maybe four, if not six, remedial classes. So here I am in school taking classes that does not go towards my degree. So I'm paying the school just to go to school. I'm not even working on my degree yet. So I had to take remedial math, remedial uh, English class at junior college just so I can take the regular college courses. So that was almost a process of, of having to go backwards before you could excel. Exactly. But I had an end goal. My goal was to get promoted to excel in the fire department. And I, at that time, I believe and knew because talking to other firefighters, if you really want to get ahead in the fire service, you need to get that degree so you can get invited to the parties. The parties are those interview parties when it comes time to apply for chief officer rank. You want to get invited to the party, you need to get you some invitation. And what were those invitations? Those invitations was college degrees. Mm. Get invited. So I guess, so I went to school and I ended up getting a master's degree. So, I mean, I love school now. I, mean, I love it now. I didn't love yeah, it now. I, I certainly have, have, have grown to have an appreciation for it as well. And it is interesting that when sometimes those trigger a, a thought or an, ex, or an experience kind of triggers the desire to achieve in a different way than maybe you had uh, seen fitting for yourself prior to that. Now, you've been in, in Austin now since, if I'm correct, uh, December of last year. So welcome to, welcome to Austin, welcome to Texas. 
Uh, I'm interested to know what your uh, what you've enjoyed most about the city so far. Wow, that's a tough question, you know. But really, what I have enjoyed probably most about the city is the city itself. It's a beautiful city, you know, very beautiful city. The communities have really welcomed me. The various community in Austin has really welcomed me as one of their sons, uh, which I really appreciate. Um, the the staff here at, at the Austin Fire Department has been very supportive of their fire chief, especially coming from the outside, which is kind of rare to have an outside chief come in. But the members here in the Austin Fire Department have really treated me very well, and I and I really and I don't take that for granted. I do not take that for granted. You have to really earn respect within your uh, fire service community. So I really appreciate how they really treat me here in the Austin Fire Department. Uh, the city manager and the assistant city manager have given me a lot of support, basically all the support that I need. Uh, so the city is one of the, the cultural events we have here, the arts, the music, you know, hey, Austin city limits. So yeah. it's, a, it's a lot that go on here in Austin that really make you uh, want to live here and, and grow here and, and be a part of the community and a workforce. It's a great place to work. So uh, this is a beautiful city. You know, I, I love it. I, I'm, I'm happy to hear that. I, I also feel the same way. There's so many different great people here, organizations, and uh, it's a great town to be in. Now, uh, in a very short period of time while you were getting adjusted, you have run into uh, COVID-19 as well as protests downtown Austin. And I'm interested to know uh, how you are doing leader through some of these challenges and how AFD is doing as well. Well, you know, uh, thinking about that question reminds me that in my lifetime in the fire service, not necessarily how long I've been in the fire service, but in my lifetime, because I was born in the 60s, uh, but in my lifetime, the fire church service has seen several different paradigm shifts. Think about it. In the 60s, the fire service primarily focused on fighting fires, putting the water on the wet stuff. Yep. Then come the 70s, the fire service got into emergency medical services. And then the 80s came along, the fire service went from fighting fire to medical service to doing, dealing with hazardous material. And then the 90s come along, the fire service went from fighting fires in the 60s, emergency medical service in the 70s, hazardous material calls in the 80s, to technical rescue, would be rope rescue, saving window washers who stuck on the side of the building, to uh, confined space on a construction site, cave ins, things like that, even cave rescue here in Austin. Our own business in 2000 shows up, and we get into homeland security with a touch of pandemic response. Here we are in COVID 19, and prior to COVID 19, the fire service had a taste of what was coming with dealing with the uh, Ebola uh, scares and emergencies. So we got a wake up call to start preparing our pandemic response. For me, we have a a great team here in Austin who had already established the foundation. What we need to do in the event we have an outbreak like Ebola or the COVID-19. So we have a, on our fire net, it's a, a, a tool we use on, on our intranet service where the members can go get updated from the city, state, and local level and federal level on dealing with COVID-19. We have uh, videos on there talk about uh, quarantine, uh, decoding the equipment, whether it be the fire truck or the fire station. Uh, we have had some unfortunate positive tests. Some of our members have come up positive. I think about three to four firefighters uh, plus or minus have come up positive with COVID-19, but they are back at work. So they recover from that and they are now back. I think maybe one may be still off duty, I think. Uh, I'm not sure about that. Uh, but the response from our members has been, uh, uh, we respond with caution because, you know, we are in a place in a space that we are really unfamiliar with. We don't know how long the COVID-19 is going to be around. So we learn as we go and we are enhancing things as we go. But fortunately, you know, here in Austin in the Texas area, we have a great support team from other fire department. Uh, the city, our city uh, uh, management has done a great job. Where our medical director is really on top of it. Support from the state levels has been, uh, been some very, very supportive. So uh, our members are doing a, a very, I'm very proud and very appreciative of those members, our members coming to work every day and putting themselves in harm's way to make sure 
that the citizens and the stakeholders are well protected. So, and, and thinking about this, um, asking me about the, uh, the protests and things of that nature going on, uh, we've been fortunate in that area that we have established a very good working relationship with our law enforcement communities as well as a great relationship with our various communities in Austin. So unlike other places in the country where fire trucks have been robbed and, and, and demonstration, demonstrators are uh, attacking the firefighters, I have not heard of seeing that happen in Austin. And hopefully we won't have that here in Austin. So we've been very, very fortunate. But really, it's, That's it's really great. Who's on the ground who's really doing a great job. Well, I'm, I'm so glad to hear that appreciate all of your your leadership through uh, you know being a new citizen here in Austin you know and then having to confront and lead through some some difficult challenges can for our audience who may be a little unfamiliar with the expanse that you talked about about how the mission the skill set that firefighters have to respond to a myriad of different um, um, uh, myriad of different experiences, throughout the city. Can you tell us what the Austin Fire Chief actually has with, at, essentially at your disposal, how many fire stations, the assets, and uh, what it is, what it actually means to be the chief of the Austin Fire Department? Oh, absolutely, and thank you for that. We have approximately uh, 1,100 firefighters, uh, sworn members who ask you to go out there and fight the fire and about uh, close to 50 fire station. Uh, we have in the queue to build approximately uh, five more stations. Matter of fact, one should be completed to, to move in, I think, August of this year, uh, about two months from now. Um, and we have several, of course, several engines and fire trucks. But the thing about Austin Fire Department is uh, we don't just do fire. Matter of fact, Austin Fire Department, that name don't really, do not even tell exactly what we do. Uh, we have a, a wonderful, I mean, a superb, outstanding Hazmat Technical Rescue Operation Unit uh, who respond to, they can respond to by any hazmat material things or technical rescue call uh, in the city of that state. Matter of fact, our wildland fire division is on top of it. We've got members right now who have been deployed in, uh, somewhere in, in, in the state of Texas uh, on wildland fire. Our members are always called upon when there are flood, a, a water rescue needs to take place. Austin Fire Department is tapped for that. Uh, we respond anywhere within the state, if I'm not mistaken, dealing with hazard material call. Uh, we have a great rope rescue team. We have uh, robotics teams. Uh, we have drones uh, and, and the water robots for the water rescue. So we have a lot going on here in the Austin Fire Department. So it's more than just being a firefighter. Uh, we really have a lot of other specialties and training that our members go through. And fortunately for us here in the state of Texas, uh, Texas have one of the best training facilities in the country that our members take advantage of as well. Some of our members teach at uh, 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 Texas down here. Yeah, it's, it, it's if you don't mind me jumping in, it's much more of an emergency response, isn't it? It's a more holistic approach, like you said. It's not just it's not fighting fires. Yeah, if, uh, fighting fires is a very small portion of what we do now, uh, and that's all over the country. Like I say, you know, we, the, the paradigm is shifting and the constant is shifting. So can, we just prepare for what's next. Can I ask you what has continued to drive you or you? It's a very high stress where you have to be on a lot and you, you spend time away from your family, you're in dangerous situations and you've done this for decades. Did you ever feel maybe you would get burnt out uh, or what do you do to keep yourself motivated to keep yourself focused and, can, and to keep yourself engaged with your career? Well, the day I get burned out is the day I take this uniform off. Because the day I get burned out, I, you start making decisions that not only put yourself in harm's way, but really put those members who depend on you in more harm way than they should be in. Uh, fortunate for me, what keep me going is having a strong support staff and surrounding yourself. My success has been, I have surrounded myself with people who are smarter than me. I don't know, it's been a long time since I've been on the back of the fire truck. So I depend on those members who do the job day in and day out to tell me what they need to be successful. And it's my job to go get what they need and then get out of their way. So surrounding yourself with people who are smarter than you in their perspective field and expertise, giving them the tools and equipment they need to be successful, 
my, my, I always tell my members, help me help you help me help us. So tell me what I need to do to help you help the fire chief so the fire chief can help the Austin Fire Department. And then I had to get out, I had to trust them enough to get out of their way so they can be successful. So the Austin Fire Department, as well as the city of Austin, can complete their mission. What so, do you think the most, what do you think the most important skill for a, a leader is of, of such a large organization? Is it community? I, I always think it's communication, like you said, but maybe it's, you know, it is knowing what's going on and making sure that you know what's happening within the fire department. But is it communication? Is it leading by example? Is there maybe a certain technique or a characteristic that you think makes your leadership style effective? I think, uh, it, I don't want to say that's a loaded question, but so many answers to that question. But I will say, uh, probably one of the things that helped me is when I make a mistake, when I'm wrong, admit it. Admit that I'm wrong. Admit that I made a mistake. Admit that I'm not perfect. But don't just admit it, mean it, and try not to do it again. You know, it's, it's okay to say I'm sorry, but it's not okay for me to say I'm sorry every day because I'm not yeah. learning from my mistakes. So when I, when I make a mistake or do something that's offensive or do something that's inappropriate, uh, I, I own up to it. I'm going to give you a, a, an example of that. Two, well, quickly, two examples of that is uh, I got caught uh, with my cell phone in my hand in my city vehicle. And when they asked me, the chief testing driver, I said, look, I don't know if I was testing on wave. I don't know what I was doing, but I do know I was in my city vehicle with my cell phone in my hand, which was wrong. I, I'm wrong. Let me take whatever punishment I'm gonna get. I admit it to, and I don't do that anymore. Another thing when I first got here, in my zeal, request to enhance diversity on the fire department, I sent a memo out, of a message from the fire chief requesting uh, members on the fire department to come be in a photo suit, suit shoot. So I asked for the African Americans to come out. I asked for lot, the Asian. Uh, Pacific Islands to come out. I requested Latino, Hispanic, I asked for members from the LGBTQ, I asked for women to come out to come and be in this photo opportunity so we can show our diversity. I left a group out, white male. Mm. And I was called on it. I got a call from a lieutenant who's a white male. I said, hey, Chief Baker, I'm a fan. You didn't ask me to participate, me, the white male group to participate. And I think that was wrong. I said, brother, you are right. Mm. Man, I didn't think about you. I messed up. So let me tell you what we want to do. I apologize to the department. I retracted it. I invite them to come out, and they did come out. And I shared with my team, diversity is not only skin color. There's a whole lot of things different with diversity. But we cannot show how diverse Austin Fire Department is if we do not include uh, the white males or the white females to show diversity. Because having our white counterparts, our white brothers and sisters, and our diversity ad, it shows the rest of the community that they are welcome, they're invited, and they are going to be accepted by the majority of members of the department. And I, and I missed that. But when it was brought to my attention, I corrected it, I held myself accountable, and then we moved on, and I feel like I'm a better person, and I thank that lieutenant for bringing it to my attention, for holding me accountable. Was there a time that your career ever, I don't know if the right word is, but you question your direction. I mean, you, you clearly have a passion for serving people and for leadership. And that's been demonstrated through your military service as well as your uh, distinguished career in emergency management. But did you ever wonder uh, what a different industry would be like? And what kind of kept you focused on pursuing a career in uh, uh, fire services? Well, you know, keep in mind, it goes back to my days graduating from high school. I knew I wasn't going to college. I didn't have the skill sets. I didn't have uh, uh, the motivation. So going to Marine Corps really laid the foundation for my leadership style and how, and how I want to conduct myself. But when I left the Marine Corps, joining the fire department was not even a thought in my mind. I wanted mm -hmm. the law enforcement. I wanted to be a police officer. Uh, and I'm Glad I didn't choose that profession and I chose <laughs> for many, many reasons. But be that as it may, uh, I'm very fortunate enough to be able to join the fire department. Uh, but my, I never thought about, I didn't have a desire to be a firefighter. That wasn't something I wanted to do. I was reading the newspaper 
and install an ad in the city of East Point, Georgia, uh, hiring for firefighters. And I, I was working on the back of a truck, loading trucks, and I know I didn't want to do that back, back breaking job. <laughs> so I just put that, you know, put the application in to join the fire department, and here I am. Um, 34, 35 years later, and it's been a blessing. It's been a great choice. I just hope that I have given back to the fire service more than to giving back to me. It has really changed my life. It's changed my life in more than one ways. You know, it does some things economically for my family that I would not have not been able to do uh, in the fire service. I just hope that I treated the fire service better than treated me because it's been great for me. Well, I mean, that's really, that's really the heart of service right there. And that's something here at Next Gen Warrior that we try to promote for veterans, especially for um, those in the armed services who are going to be leaving the military soon and are coming out into uh, many different circumstances, maybe than, um, you know, I left the service in 10 years ago. I'm interested to know, uh, because of your background and your, your leadership and service experience, what would be your message to a veteran who was who was looking to try to find their place and how to get back to the community after the military the first thing i would say now uh ptsd is real it's mm -hmm. very real, uh, for our veterans uh and fortunately for us the austin fire department we have an excellent support system i mean a great support system dealing with ptsd and other uh issues that our members who are in the military and who have not been in the military to take advantage of. So I want to encourage, and we give five points. We give an additional five points for veterans. We just did this when I came on board to give five points for veterans. So I want to encourage those veterans to seek a, seek a career in the fire service, but more especially come to the Austin Fire Department because we have a support system that can support those members who are coming out of the military who may have some challenges and may not have challenges. Suicide is real. I think it's what every 22 seconds or 22 days, 22 minutes, someone's from the military yep. suicide. Suicide is real. We have a support system here in the Austin Fire Department. If you can serve your country, if you can put yourself in harm's way to protect this country, you can put yourself in harm's way to protect the citizens of Austin and allow the citizens of Austin to give back to you for your service to this country as well to your service, potential service. To the city of Austin. So I want to encourage those military personnel to go to joinafd.com, buy the information card, let us contact you via email, phone call, let us encourage you. Come see what it's like. You don't know until you try it. I tried it when I left the Marine Corps, had no idea what a great career this was going to be for me. And here I am on my second tour of duty, so to speak. There you second go. Fire department. Uh, here in Austin Fire Department, and I, I love it. So for those veterans, and, and the veterans, they come with they come with the with the right attitude and behavior and the aptitude to pass the test. Uh, they can pass the physical agility test. They already have the discipline they need, and they bring the leadership what we need now in in the fire service and public safety. They come with those leadership skills we're looking for. So they should have no problem matriculating through the various ranks, whether it be from firefighters, fire specialists. Lieutenant, Captain, Chief Officer rank. So uh, we got room for them here. I love to hear that. So let me ask you a little bit more lighthearted question here. When you get to uh, push away from uh, the office and get a little bit of time off to get some fresh air, what could we find uh, Chief Baker doing on a Saturday or Sunday? Well, on a Saturday and Sunday, if I'm not talking to my, my friends and family via phone or FaceTime, whatever, I'm either reading a book, I'm listening to my uh, vinyls. I have some, look, I'm a, I'm a metal head. a good vinyl I, collection? Uh, a good uh, I, I, vinyl oh, collection? I have a vinyl collection. I mean, oh. boy, I have a lot of Iron Maiden C, I mean, Iron Maiden vinyl. Yeah. This is my favorite group. I, I got into heavy metal by mistake through the Marine Corps. Uh, in the you're, hanging out with, you're hanging out with too many metalheads. I'm I, I, uh, doing that to some of my friends in uh, in the service because I'm, I'm a little bit of a metalhead myself. Yeah. So uh, when I'm not listening to my vinyl or reading the book, I have a motorcycle. I ride yeah. my motorcycle. Uh, all Texas has some great roads. Oh my god! Oh, it does, doesn't it? The roads here, <laughs> the roads here in Texas are, are wonderful. I mean, yes. it's motorcycle riding roads here in Texas. The toll roads, I mean, 
Boy. You can just get out and go and you can be, you know, an, an hour outside of town and it's just, it's a, it's a great place to be able to ride. It's an excellent place to ride. Texas got some great, I'm smiling because, man, when I came, I said, man, these roads are great. So I'm either reading or riding my motorcycle, talking to my friends and family, you know, via phone, FaceTime, or I'm just out in the community. You know, I, I get invited to different community events and I go to the community. And, and, and when I go to these different community events, I tell them, don't call me Chief Baker. Don't do that. Call me Joel. Because see, Chief Baker only get what he needs. Joel get what he wants. And I have more wants than I have needs. <laughs> so, so I let tell me, call me Joel. It's just relax. Let's take off the uniform. Just it's hell, relax. Let's build a relationship so I can get some things that I really want. Well, de that's definitely a key leadership trait as well as the ability to build rapport with people and connect with the community. And the last question we'll ask you here uh, before we let you go is, do you have a message for veterans out there? Maybe we didn't get to uh, hit on something that you would like to discuss. I'll leave you with the last word. Yes, again, I want our veterans to go to joinafd.com. I want them to continue to practice their social distancing uh, per the CDC guideline. Uh, another thing, the city of Austin have a veteran affairs uh, a person, liaison person that can help them uh, participate, not only working for the Austin Fire Department, but other career within the city of Austin. And I really do want to encourage the veterans. We give five extra points to veterans. Five extra points to veterans. So I really want to encourage them to seek a career in the Austin Fire Department. You don't just have to be a firefighter once you get on board. We have a fire investigation unit known as arson. We have a drone team. We have the water water rescue team. We have a swift water rescue team. We have the hazmat team, technical rescue team. We have wildland fires. We have a trainer can we become a train instructor. And you never know. You may end up leaving this job as a fire chief. You know, once you <laughs> I'm 30 years here. There are many well, opportunities here for our veterans. Well, Chief Baker, uh, or if I should say Joel, uh, thank, Joel. You for, thank you for your leadership here and thank you for being such a great example for us and uh, our non-service peers as well for your continued leadership and service here to the city of Austin and the people of Texas. And thanks for being our guest on the Next Gen Warriors show. Well, thank you. And whenever the Gen Warriors uh, have an event uh, that I can attend and support, let me know and I'd be more than happy to come out and support. And when this COVID stuff is over with, uh, as soon as possible, let's you and I get together and have some lunch. Hey, I like that, sir. I'd be happy to take and I will even let you. And I will even let you buy. What? That's such an honor. Thank you. You're so generous. I love you. <laughs> well, All thanks right. for being with us, Chief. On behalf of Chairman George P. Bush and the Texas Veterans Land Board, thank you for listening to our show. Thank you for continuing to support veteran success across the great state of Texas and across the nation. If you are a veteran or audience or non-service peer, please continue to share the great success stories like Chief Joel Baker so we can continue to encourage and create more success stories of those who leave our armed services and return to our communities. My name is Dan Hamilton, I'm listening to the Next Gen Warrior. We'll talk to you next time. Follow us on Instagram at Voices of Vets, on Twitter at Voice of Veterans, and on Facebook at facebook.com slash Voices of Veterans. To hear more, please visit voicesofveterans.org. Join us in sharing the success stories of Texas veterans. Thank you for joining us for the Next Gen Warrior Podcast.